Hello everyone, welcome to A plus PI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very radical equation. We have the square root of z plus the square root of z plus i equals i and we're going to find the z values that satisfy. We're also going to be looking at the result from or from alpha c if they agree with what we find. All right, so when you have a radical equation with real numbers, what do you do? You square both sides. Obviously, with the complex numbers, it's a different story because there are two square roots of a complex number, so we need to be careful and we also need to check our work. So let's go ahead and start by squaring both sides. Now, the squaring on the left basically takes out the outer square root, giving us z plus the square root of z plus i equals i squared, which happens to be negative 1. One thing that you should never ever forget, forget everything about complex numbers, but never forget that i squared is equal to negative 1. Now, we have a radical still, so let's go ahead and isolate it. That way we can square both sides again, and we can kind of write this as negative z minus 1. Or negative 1 minus c doesn't matter, no big deal. Now let's go ahead and square both sides one more time. And of course, squaring both sides will create some problems. We have to take care of them, right? It could bring in extraneous solutions. Such a fancy word, right? Solutions that don't satisfy the original equation. So z plus i from here is going to equal z squared. And you can think of this as z plus 1 squared because the negative 1 squared is going to be positive 1, so you can basically take it out or get rid of it completely. And this is a little easier to handle. z squared plus 2z plus 1. Uh-oh, nothing cancelled out. I was hoping that something would cancel out, but it didn't. That's okay. Let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. And I think the right-hand side is better because it has z squared. And then when I subtract z from it, 2z minus z is going to be 1z. And then we're going to have plus 1 minus i equals 0. So our goal was to turn this into a quadratic equation, and we got it. Now, how do you solve a quadratic equation for complex solutions? Or a quadratic equation with complex coefficients, right? Because if you have a quadratic equation with real coefficients, Sometimes the equations will be non-real, but in this case, if you have a complex coefficient, then could the solutions be all real? Or could one of them be real? Something to think about. Anyways, let's go ahead and solve this problem. And what is the best method? Well, one of them is quadratic formula. The other one is probably completing the square. Let's use the quadratic formula. I don't like the completing the square thing because I have to add one fourth, which is not very friendly. So, let's go ahead and write the z as negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4ac. In this case, that's going to be 4 times 1 minus e, right? And then divide it by 2a, which is 2. Awesome, let's go ahead and simplify what's under the radical, and hopefully we'll be able to find the square root of that number. So, it's going to give us negative 1 plus minus 1 minus 4 plus 4i, that means I have negative 3 plus 4i under the radical, and that's divided by 2. Okay, can we square root negative, 4, negative 3 plus 4i easily? Let's think about it. There's different ways to find the square root of a number. First method is, there's a formula, but I don't think you want to memorize it. Set it equal to a plus bi, which is the name of this channel, by the way, right? And then you can square both sides and try to find the a and b values. Negative 3 plus 4i is going to equal a squared minus b squared, if you square this, plus 2abi. And then if you set the real parts equal, this is going to be a negative 3, and this is going to be a 4. Meaning, a squared minus b squared is going to be negative 3, or you can write it as the negated form, which I like better. b squared minus a squared is positive 3, and ab is equal to Four. I mean, half of 4 is 2, right? Okay. Yes, here we go. So that's our system. Can we solve it? Absolutely. Replace b with 2 over a, turn it into quadratic, so on and so forth. Do a lot of substitution. But wait a minute. 
Let's try to guess the answer because it should be easy, right? Can we find two numbers whose product is two? Hopefully they are integers. And when we square them and subtract them, we should get three. Yes, two and one work. Awesome, right? So from here, B can be two and A can, uh, A can be two and B can be one. Wait a minute, is it the other way around? Yeah, I messed up, sorry. I just, because I switched it around. So A is supposed to be smaller. A is one, B is two, great. Now, can it be anything else? Absolutely, because we're squaring them and we're multiplying them. So that kind of takes care of the negatives. They can also be negative one and negative two. That's actually a good way to look at it because if you remember, uh, the two square roots of a complex number are opposites. In other words, if one of them is a plus bi, the other one is negative a minus bi. Because when you square these numbers, you get the same thing. I'm not talking about conjugates. They're not conjugates. They are, well, they could be conjugates, I guess, if a is zero, but we're talking about in general, they're not. Okay? So, we got the a, b values. Therefore, uh, the square root of negative 3 plus 4i is going to be 1 plus 2i or negative 1 minus 2i. Great. Let's go ahead and use both of these values and then we're going to see what happens. Let's go ahead and clean up this area and then I want to hold on to my square roots, of course. 1 plus 2i and the opposite of that. So, let's go ahead and go with the 1 plus 2i. z sub 1, negative 1 plus, by the way, the plus minus sign will be taken care of by the roots because one of them is the opposite of the other. Let's just go ahead and keep everything plus. So we could use 1 plus 2i first divided by 2. And then this should give me when the negative 1 and the positive 1 cancel out, this should give me i. So that's one of the solutions. And z sub 2 is going to be negative 1 minus 1 plus 2i over 2. But this is just going to give you negative 2 minus 2i and negative 1 minus i is going to be another solution. But guess what? We, need, we, should, we should, we need to check for extraneous solutions. Let's go ahead and do it. And now we're going to look at the results from Wolfram Alpha. Okay. Now, if you consider the original problem, this is what we had. And now if z is i, replace z with i, you're going to get the square root of i plus the square root of 2i. And we expect this to be equal to what? What was it equal to? I, right? Okay. Let's see if this is going to work. Now, what's the square root of 2i? 2i has two square roots. If you remember, when we square 1 plus i, we get 2i. Therefore, one of the square roots of 2i is 1 plus i. The other one is negative 1 minus i. Of course, it's opposite. You see how easy that is. So I can kind of try to use 1 plus i first, i plus 1 plus i, and then I need to square root it, but that's going to be 1 plus 2i. And its square root is not equal to i. I do know that for sure because if you square both sides, it's not going to work. We don't know the square root of this number, but we know it's not i, right? Okay. There's only one number whose square root is i, by the way. That's negative 1. Cool. What happens if I take the other, uh, replace z with, okay, I'm still replacing z with i, but this time I want to take the other square root, which is i plus negative 1 minus i. So can I just write it as i minus 1 minus i using the opposite of this? And that's going to give me the square root of negative 1. And yay, this is going to be i, of course. There are two square roots, but one of them at least works. So hopefully this should be acceptable, which means z equals i seems to be working. But the problem with that is the principal square root. So when I write like square root of z, if z is equal to 2i, which one do I mean? Because there's two of them, right? So to avoid ambiguity, a lot of times we're going to go with this one. Therefore, you're not allowed to use this one. So i will probably not fly as a solution. But it kind of works, partially, right? Let's go ahead and test something else. z was i, and what was the other scenario, negative 1 minus i. If z is negative 1 minus i, then we're going to go ahead and replace z with that. And that should give us square root of negative 1 minus i plus the square root of negative 1, right? Because i is going to cancel out. And this will be i or negative i. If this is i, we're going to get negative 1 minus 2i. If this is negative i, actually, if this is negative i, we're going to get that. If this is i, then we're going to get negative 1, the square root of negative 1, 
which again can be i or negative i. But since we're going with the principle, hopefully i will work, which means this is a valid solution. In my opinion, z equals i is also valid, but let's see what the Wolfram Alpha says. Uh-oh, there's only one complex solution, and that is negative 1 minus i. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.